Hello and welcome to the webinar. My name is Lori Rubin and I'm very excited to introduce you to one of the top wedding photographers, my friend Frank Salas. He is a master photographer and a photographic craftsman. He is a regular speaker and judge at some of the major national and international photo conferences such as WPPI, Imaging USA, and Photoshop World. He has many coveted awards, so if you want to learn more about Frank, please visit his website at franksalas.com. Frank, thank you so much for joining us today. We're very excited to see your beautiful images, and I know you've been a big fan of Nick for many years, so we look forward to seeing your presentation. Yeah, thank you, Lori. Thank you. I'm excited because it's uh, one of been one of my favorite um, softwares, as you probably know me for such a long time, and so it's glad to see that uh, we get to share it with everybody else. That's great. We look forward to your presentation. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Okay, so I guess we're ready to go, everybody. So I'm hoping you guys are sitting tight. I'm in speaking to you from, I would like to say, sunny California today, but it uh, looks like we've got our once a year rain. So I guess we're all complaining on this side, but thank you for spending the time with me. We'll kind of give you a brief overview of uh, what we're gonna present. But first of all, I just wanna share with you a little bit of my work so you can kind of see what I do. Um, those of you who are, of course, on social media, junkies like ourselves, Facebook, as Lori mentioned, is one item, but of course, we're pretty much daily on uh, Instagram. So if you want to follow for those that uh, are interested, and um, of course, my background, you'll notice um, is that uh, wedding photography. So you're certainly going to see tons of that. I'm, I'm actually live on my computer screen. So you'll see me exit in and out through the different software. So you'll get to see that live as I go through that. So we'll work together. But basically, just to show you a little bit of the work, I mean, it's, Again, as a wedding photographer, we get to photograph in all variety of locations, whether it's indoors, outdoors. Being in California, of course, we get these beautiful ocean views, but certainly, you know, we get to work in all conditions, um, as you know. And, and even if you're a portrait photographer, same thing, you know, whether you're photographing in a home or outdoors at a park, or again, beaches, the same thing. We all kind of work in the same way. You know, we have to kind of be great at our lighting and our posing and and the technical part, but today, of course, is the part that all of us spend lots of time on, right, which is the post-production part. So hopefully there'll be things that I can share with you, some uh, great ideas to help you enhance uh, your images. And I know that uh, the word enhancement varies, right? I mean, as myself doing this for so long, you know, I started when digital came out. I think our first weddings in digital were in 2000, 2001. That's when the beginning of digital started. So you know, I've been through this whole journey from film, the first 20 years of, of doing weddings with film to now to this. And so one of the things that I always give education on is that uh, having to do my own darkroom work, certainly not for the whole wedding, but starting with darkroom work, you know, this same thing applies. Some of these techniques today that I'm going to share with you, whether it's black and white, uh, again, color, different toning, is really brought over from the darkroom days because we kind of had the same concepts uh, then some of the traditional fundamentals. But today, as you see like an image here, you know, color correction is in, in our control. A lot of these things are in our control, which so we're so spoiled about that. Like here you see an image that's right out of the camera, um, hasn't been color corrected. And certainly, as you know, there, you know, through the softwares, you know, we're able to take control of that. So there'll be a few tips. I'll kind of show you a couple of little lighting things I'll throw in there with you. But my main thing is to kind of give you some of these like four or five key things that it will help you at least start with your photos and prepping those and getting those correct in the camera, first of all. So, in fact, if I can add, I'll show you just a couple more photos that I think that's pretty much the number one tip that I, I share with everybody. Even when I'm speaking at a, a conference with yeah, Photoshop World with, with a bunch of techs and people that love all the softwares, is really they'll ask me, what is the best preset or the best computer I should build? Anything to speed up this workflow, because if you're, again, portraits, weddings, you're, you know, you're looking at hundreds of images and it takes, as you, we know, forever to, to get through all these. Um, and so really the number one thing that I always mention is that you've got to get the exposure as perfect as you can in the camera. Okay. So again, let's say this picture here, straight out of the camera. Of course, you and I know that afterwards we can do you know, whatever we want, right? Just to create an impact to the images through these softwares and presets and plugins. So I've got some really cool tips to help you with that. But if I can give one tip to speed up your workflow, uh, and that would be the exposure, no matter what you do with the uh, uh, converting and of course processing, you know, you're gonna have an uphill battle, 
because once again, you're looking at here a raw file, but if the background's blown out or the foreground has doesn't have enough detail, then you're really in an uphill battle. And you can see we can change these and add some really cool effects after the words, but we really want to start out with that um, perfect, perfect exposure. And I say perfect exposure real quickly, just as that I'm talking about mainly is the the highlight. You know, if the highlight is washed out, you're seeing a picture of the groom, there's window light on his face. You know, if that highlight is washed out, it's really hard to recover that. Uh, and obviously vice versa, if your shadows are too dark, same thing applies. But in most cases, we're targeting the exposure on the initial uh, photo shoot of the highlight and we want to maintain the detail. And as you look at the back of your camera, I think that's the confusion is that many times a photographer will see and try to, it looks kind of dark in the back of the camera. So you try to open up the aperture or the shutter just to get a little more light in there. But what you're really doing is, is again, You'll add more to the shadow side, but if you go back, finally download the photo, you're going to see that your highlights have been getting out of control. So we'll talk about that. So, so that's kind of key number one. It really is when I, no matter who I've talked to, is uh, I can't mention that enough. Is just to get the exposure perfectly. Uh, a tip for myself um, is that you know I use a handheld light meter, uh, incident meter. Um, I know that most of us, and I'm using mirrorless myself, so I do like the electronic viewfinder. That is. You know, super cool to be able to make your adjustments. But the key thing when I use handheld meters, even to this date, is I don't think about my exposures. I meter at one time, meter for the highlight, boom. Once I download all these images into your softwares, now you're just really tweaking the shadows, color temperature, and then of course any of the other enhancements that you want to play with. So we'll talk a little bit about that. So so kind of the quick thing I add here and number two for us is that prepping the file. And that goes along with, we talked about pre-prepping, which means the, the exposure. But when I say prepping it, now we're talking about prepping it for you to now play with the image and add these enhancements. And so if you see the photo on the right, that's straight out of the camera. It's a raw file. Nothing's done to it, right? So we already talked about the exposure, that being key, because again, you don't want to have to repair a photo. You want to be able to enhance the photo. And of course, here's the image once it's been processed, you know, through whatever your favorite raw converting and presets are. But here's the key. So let's kind of get out of here now. Obviously, you're seeing a before and after picture here in a second. So I've, this is a before flash on camera, off camera, illuminating this. And so again, if you notice, I point, put this here, you see there's detail if I move my mouse around in the dress, which that means I've got to, the exposure's got to be perfect. So we're not washing it out. Um, color I can correct later. We'll talk about that, of course. Uh, any special, and this is straight out of the camera, there's no Photoshop or anything, but the exposure is key so that when we start adding presets, you're going to see in a few minutes why I kind of talk about that. Now, as I clone the light out of the picture, perhaps, get rid of the people in the background. Now you can see some details. So we'll kind of pull some raw images and kind of take you through some of that. So if you're ready for that, we'll do that. But here's another tip and let's kind of close out of here. Let's move into a Lightroom. I'm going to start into that for you guys. So let's move into that folder and, um, and kind of talk about some of these. So here's another key thing and I'll go full screen and you'll see this live. So you'll get to see some tools and stuff. So how I actually physically do this and, and show you some of the presets that we're using with the Nick collection. But here's another major Frank's tip for you guys. That's super important, super, super important. Cause I, I'm like you guys, you know, I, I buy all the softwares, I play with them, I test them. Some I like, some I don't like, right. Drives us all crazy, right. We're always talking online and, on our, on our Facebook groups. And what about this one? What about that one? That preset's great. Well, if you're like me, I'm like a junkie in regards to, I really like to figure out what it's doing, why it's doing things. What, as an instructor teaching Lightroom, Photoshop techniques, and especially in the portrait and wedding world, you know, I need to know what's going on. I just don't want to click a button. I need to know what's going to be the best to enhance my photos. So, so quick, quick thing here. Let's first start out with this, maybe some skin tones, first of all. So I'm going to just cl click on this one. And let's go over to our develop module. Now, quick thing too is I I like to work on my images in both, um, starting both in either Lightroom or if I'm working on a single image, I may just go straight into Photoshop and launch Camera Raw. So I might pull a couple images in a minute to Camera Raw to show you how that works. That's another great workflow. But if you're you're kind of going through many images, our initial 
corrections as you probably all do is in in a perhaps in Lightroom, right? You're just doing your your color and your exposures. But many times, if I'm correcting for uh, and here, let's give you another quick tip here, is if you're correcting images, like this is a straight raw file, um, you know, I'm not going to add any crazy uh, enhancements. Really, if this was a one for a client, if you look on the right side, everything's zeroed out, so you can see. The exposure on this so you can see what I'm talking about this is will give you the example of what I'm talking about having a what I consider a perfect exposure take a look over on the right side do you guys see the exposure added yet there's nothing added in here yet so that means that right out of the camera there's the exposure now if I turn on the the items here on the top left so you can see what I did here here's what the shutter speed was the aperture the uh, ISO the lens I used that's exactly how this was captured, right? So that you can see that with a perfect exposure, now when we do the tweaks in the photos, you'll notice that those are gonna be a lot more successful for you. So, so that's number one. So you notice when I do enhance this for the initial client, I'm adding this little extra bonus here for that, I don't sit here and add all these presets and really glorify the image because it's just a proof for the client. So that's another thing people ask me, when do you start adding all the, uh, extra colors and so on and so on but realistically if this was just for a client i may do a if you notice start with a color temperature and those of you who are working with uh, lightroom same thing i know there's another tip that i talk about here and um is about white balance i'll throw that little quick tip in there for you too is that you can apply with the uh eye drop if that's something you prefer as a way to have a good balance but if you guys notice sometimes when you look around, you start clicking around, do you ever notice that it's sometimes too warm, sometimes too cold? Well, here's the tip then, if I open this back up, if you notice in the bottom of this target, in the bottom where it says RGB, and it says right now R86.8, G, which is green, 86.1, and then of course, blue, 84.8. Well, the thing is that in order for this uh, white balance tool to work perfectly, Here's a little thing that they don't tell you is that the reason you're getting different colors all over the place when you're clicking, even if you click a, a neutral color we think is neutral, I mean, I can click back here in the wall, but the secret is that the reason some people will use that gray card because it's really looking for a neutral, quote unquote neutral, which is really like an 18% gray card is really on this planet is like neutral. So that means that if anything is neutral, that means that those numbers in the bottom, the red, green, blue, if you hit a, a perfect gray card, that means that all numbers are the exact same numbers. So anytime that you see the red is 10 points more, the green, vice versa, or the blue is off, they're not matching. That's why that whatever color picker is looking at, it's not exactly a neutral tone. It's not an 18% gray. So that's the technical part, why you're driving yourself nuts, <laughs> not getting the perfect white balance, right? So that's probably one of my number one things that people are like, aha. Uh -huh. No wonder that thing doesn't work. So you can get it close enough, and obviously you have the I option of going manual and then selecting that accordingly, whatever your taste is. So, so just to give you a tip, as I'm prepping the file before it goes into enhancements, right? So we want to prep that. And of course, same thing here. If I feel I need to recover highlights, now before I go any further on this one, I got the here's the here's the preset tip because we're going to talk about mainly here in a couple minutes. Uh, the enhancements, and we're talking about presets, uh, plugins, whether you're using uh, it through uh, Lightroom or you're using it through Photoshop. I'm going to kind of show you both. You know, the main thing, here's probably the one tip of the day that that you're going to like is that here, now let me talk for a couple seconds, is that a preset obviously is already a set of recipes or a set of adjustments that have already been done for you. Is that correct? I mean, obviously, someone's already tweaked a certain amount. You come over in this side, depending which purchase person or things that you've purchased presets, you click on them and that's where it comes up with. But here's the thing. The reason I mentioned earlier, when I deliver this to a bride to look at it for the first time, again, I may have only done exposure adjustment, number one. Number two, if I need to recover highlights, of course, I'm gonna play with that a little bit. If I need to recover those shadows, I can play with that. Whites, same thing, back and forth as needed, right? Uh, blacks, I don't really touch too much unless it's maybe a backlit situation. So that's, again, up to you when you, there'll be a certain, some pictures in here in a minute, we might use that. But everything else here below, including the rest of the panels, I don't touch on a neutral correction for my client to view it for the first time. 
So remember, if I'm this is a complete wetting, we're just doing color correction, uh, exposure, uh, a little bit of highlight recover, maybe a little shadow recover, and that's it. So here's the major tip now. Let's say that you did do the opposite. You went through here, you went through the tone curve, you said you went a little split toning, you added, you name it, you even bumped up uh, extra contrast. I know we love it when the blacks are nice and deep. We love all that, but here's the problem, is that if you take an image to the next step, which means we're gonna use one of the Nick collections or you use any preset that you love, well, here's the problem, is that most of those recipes, in most cases, do a couple major things and one of them happens to be is a contrast a major contrast boost so if this image has already let's say we already added black to make this look wow this looks a little bit sexier and maybe i want a little more contrast or vice versa most of the time people are adding more contrast you notice that um, same thing maybe you either opening shadows or darkening shadows so if you look at it this way if you've already applied in your original photo, if you would, all these adjustments. Now, when you start playing with presets, you've already pretty much double processing the file. So if you ever do take an image and you start adding a certain preset, that's what's happening. So, and I'm gonna, I have a tip for black and white at the end that'll show you how to getting, get the best and the most beautiful black and white. And that's, and you'll see another tip on that that I share again during these, uh, uh, software conferences and so that's the way you do that is that if you stay with a neutral image you doesn't mean you can't come back in the lightroom and add your other stuff later right but the secret is that you don't want to provide that all in advance so you just have to decide what's better in your workflow but for me you know i don't want to the the couple hasn't paid me the bright and hasn't paid me to give all this custom enhancements yet if they want that that's when i produce whether it's a wedding album or a wall portrait then I come back and do my favorite tweak. So, so that's a major thing I always need to share is that when you start doing this is don't over enhance this because when you start adding presets, that's where they start going down the hill on you because you've already added too much contrast and it just looks real muddy, right? And I know we've all had that. We're like, wow, I really bought this. So, so anyway, so that's a good tip. So let's talk about the skin portion now and show you in the Nick collection, which is our favorite. So this is probably the best, one of my favorite features is the skin portion. So if you're working with children portraits, family portraits, you know, any of these works for this. So let's go back to just, I'm gonna reset this for a second as I just click on the corner. And once again, I'm just going to adjust the exposure. When I adjust exposure, as I zoom in, I'm making sure that there's details here in the highlight section. And again, that helps with in-camera exposures. I always want to, you know, same thing, make sure I'm not blown out anywhere here. You can see in your histogram on the top, that helps. As you notice, if you see you hover to the top right of here, you can drag left and right, even in the histogram, and pick whether you work in mid-tones or down to the far right, the highlights. So there's a little shortcut if you love that. So I always like to work with shortcuts too. But so shadow, same thing here. I think the shadow looks great. I have to work with that whites and the same with blacks. I can almost stay neutral for right now. Now, now that you're ready to add a preset to here, you can basically right click and you can either export into, export out once it's completed. But in this case, we wanna edit. So do we wanna edit directly in Photoshop? or do we wanna go right to the Nick software? A lot of times I'm gonna take you through a step I open as a smart object, if you notice that, in Photoshop. And the reason I open as a smart object in Photoshop, you'll see a couple of reasons why. I can either keep the adjustments, which it will, it'll still save the adjustments there. And it looks like it cruised over on my screen here, there we go. It's kept those adjustments. But this will allow me to, and here's a tip, if, you, if you're not familiar with smart objects in Photoshop, you right click on here, or in this case, you double click. And first of all, it'll bring you back into the camera raw. So you can still make adjustments here. Okay, you can still make adjustments on that image that you brought directly from Lightroom. Or if you wanna maybe, let's say we wanna darken this area here a little bit. Maybe let's say we wanna darken here. What you do is you don't wanna hit Control J, right? If you hit Control or Command J, that's the normal way of making a copy. But if I do that with a smart object, you see the little full, if I do that with a smart object, what'll happen is that it's just it's just duplicating. So if I make any adjustments on this top file, it's gonna affect the bottom file. So the way to avoid that is if you right click here, 
and go up here and say new smart object via copy. So that means that it gives me a brand new copy. So whatever adjustment I do here won't affect the bottom here. So now you double click here. And again, if you want to do a little extra processing here, you want to darken just the flowers. Okay, before we add our little cool effects, you can hit OK. And then in this case, I may add a mask. So if you hold down the Alt uh, key or depending if you're on Mac, do the opposite. So you can add that and then I'll just paint that in. So this is just a couple. I'm just still prepping this file. Let me soften the brush here real quick so it's not so harsh. There we go. And so, and if, I, if it's a little bit too much, I can just adjust the same thing with the keys. So this is just prepping that file, just a little minor stuff. And people ask me how I kind of tweak a little stuff before I get to the main thing. So once I'm done here and I'm ready now to add a filter to this, many times as I will set up on a separate layer above that next preset effect. So many times if I want to keep what's here, I'll do a shift command, con command or control E, and that'll bring me up on a whole new layer, right? Shift control alt. E as in Edward or shift control command E. That's a shortcut, it's a long shortcut, right? That'll add a whole new layer with all these adjustments there, but won't affect this. Now, if you are in Photoshop, just come over to your filters, your Nick collection. The first one will be the Color Effects Pro 4. And that's usually probably the favorite one that I'll use for doing, uh, whether it's uh, adding contrast or adding details. Uh, on these photographs. And so you'll notice some of the tips there. Let's come back and center this on the screen. So you'll notice it's on top of all these windows here, right? So I'll make this large so it doesn't confuse you. But if you notice on this top corner, those are basically the tools, uh, the adjustments of whatever you're gonna add on this side. So let's click on all. These are all the presets that are included with the Color Effects Pro. And you can use it choose whether you like if there's some sections that they've created for us whether you're into weddings um, if you're into architecture landscape nature they've given you a set of presets that they have used that work very successful so what i've done is i've hit all many times and i might pick out the top four five six that i like so if you click under favorites you notice these little stars have highlights all you have to do is as you go through some of these is just click maybe the star and then you don't have to fish through every one if in case that's something you want to do. But either way, it's great to, I've literally clicked on every single one of these before and just test them just to see what they do, what's the effect they have. And as I mentioned, that's how I figured out how presets are more successful is by not over processing that file from the get go, right? So if I keep it neutral like you have here. Now, if you notice here on the top right, it says tonal contrast. Chances are that's the last filter I used when I left this software. So if I X out of there, now it's back to the neutral section, okay? So let's do a little skin enhancement here for you because I have to say if there's one, my secret tool that I've always used for the skin has been in, the, in this Nick Color Effects Pro 4. I mean, this has always been the go-to. You know, you don't hear about it, but I'm thinking, okay, this is my go-to. It just puts this buttery looking skin softening that I don't think I've found anywhere else. I think any of us have used this. We've like, you're right. This is it. We love this tool. So here you go. So I have it listed under my favorites, the dynamic skin softener. Now, if you notice this little kind of what looks like a little multiple folders, you know, they've given you a couple of different presets. So if you want something that's, that's obviously the default, maybe something stronger it says here or the entire image, but it's pretty simple when you go back to the, the, the original one is that if you click here, it says you start with the skin color. This is amazing. I think that I haven't seen this on any other type where depending on the skin color of the subject, really this is how this technology works, which is just amazing. It's just not taking a generic set of numbers in the algorithm, just doing it generically. It's really fixing that for you. So if you click on here, and you'll notice sometimes you'll have like there's makeup section on here. There's a highlight here, obviously shadows, you can call that. But if you click here, you're going to get one set of filters. It's kind of a, approach to that. If you sometimes go in between the middle, you can kind of just click around. You'll notice sometimes it's a little softer than others. Well, they have basically an adjustment for that. So if you come over here, it gives you the color reach, which technically for me, it seems like it expands between 
these two different tones. So whether it's a dark tone color or this one, you can adjust this. Now, I always like to joke around. And what I say is that I always take my sliders all the way to the right and all the way to the left. And my joke is that I always go all the way to the right and max them out. So I kind of get my money's worth. I know it's a joke that I do, and even in Lightroom, right? I just max everything out so that I can really get an idea of what that slider is doing. So don't be afraid to experiment with that. Same with whether you're working in small detail, right? You can click on that. Sometimes there's like which are the smaller pores. Uh, if you feel you have medium detail, same thing. I'm kind of going back and forth, adjusting that to your your vision, your eye to see which one you prefer, right? So that's really how that's adjusted right there. Just amazing if I can do like a before and after and kind of scroll through that, you can kind of see the difference. Now, here's the other part that's been what we've, and this was, this software has been really, I have to say, advanced. This was, if I understand and I do remember, this has been built way before Lightroom, right? This is, this was just a way ahead of its time. I, I can't believe that this is, has been around and, and a lot of people hadn't wasn't aware of it, but this technology has been around uh, and was so great before its time. It's amazing. So what you would do here is that, let's say it's almost giving you a global, I'm going to back out softening here, but you don't want all this softening. You just maybe want to stick to a certain area. Well, if you notice down this corner, let me kind of click back out of here and so I can see the bottom portion of that because I've got a lot of windows going here. Uh, if you notice here down below, if I want to use this and I'm okay with the way it looks, I've made the adjustments here. I'll talk about control points in a minute, but you have an option of either just hitting okay with that. When you hit okay, it'll take it back into Photoshop with this global filter, okay? So everything is soft. Number two, if I hit brush, which is my preference, I can go and either remove and subtract after the fact, right? I can do that prior. So you have the option of using, you notice a minus or plus. You can click on one of these and select an area. Let's say I'm gonna go here and just move this around. And right here, whatever area is within this circle, I can change the enhancement. So right now I've removed that softening in this, whatever's in this area here, see whatever's in, listed there, I've moved this around. It's also detecting the skin, this color, it's not affecting anything else because I've just identified. So you have an option the, in this technology to go, if you just want to specific, you don't want to go brush it later in Photoshop. You just want to get in and out, especially out of Lightroom and back up for a second. If I were coming out of Lightroom and I'm using a raw file, this feature down here, brush, is not available to you. So just FYI, in case you download a trial, which I invite you to do. So this way, this option lets you I guess if you want to say it's like a brush, it allows you just to select its area of this in this within this circle, right? So that's how you're making the adjustment. So here is the opacity. So I can make this adjustment here. Now, if I prefer not to do that, I'm going to hit delete. It's still global. Now, remember, I can minus that. So if I just want to remove it from a certain area, same thing here. So whatever is within that circle is still on her face, but I have an option of, let's say, down below, I don't want it in this area. Maybe I don't want her skin to look so soft in there. I can remove it again based on that opacity. So that's the cool part. If you do, if you want to go straight out of Lightroom, you're working on a raw file and you don't really want to brush it. You want to be quick. So this is fast. This is very fast and convenient. So let's remove this because my favorite way to do this, you're seeing this global, is I'll hit brush. And now it'll see here working, it's gonna add here a mask for you. This is all working behind the scenes. And it's gonna open an, a new image or the same image, but with applying those effects. And you'll notice you've got a little extra window here on the side and let this process here, adding to this. This is a raw file, I'm working on a raw file. So it's, it's not a, a JPEG, you can apply this to a JPEG. So by the way, there's no effect on that. It still works on both uh, files, but on this side, I can do a couple things. Obviously, you have a mask. But this one, let me zoom into this, because right now it has not applied. Just hit brush, but it has not applied anything yet. Okay, so I have a brush, and um, you can choose whether you're at 100 percent and your choice. Because remember, you're going to add this accordingly. So let's leave it at 100 percent. But what you have choices are is this: whatever you filter you just used, you're either going to paint it in. So if I click paint, then I'm going to paint where I want. 
or number two, I'm going to just hit fill, which usually I just hit fill, and then I'll come back and hit erase. So let's hit fill, and there, it's added it to the whole image. Okay, remember you have a couple options. Now, I prefer if you're using a Wacom tablet, because I like to draw and I like to kind of paint. So I'll usually click the erase tool. And then if I want to come back and remove, maybe this is a little bit too soft for me, and I'm at 100% above, as you guys know, the shortcuts on, on your keyboard in Photoshop, you hit the number five, you're at 50%, number two, 20%, number eight, 80%. So at about maybe your choice, 40%, I may erase it in certain areas. Sometimes if her skin tone is so kind of um, light complected, almost matching the dress, sometimes they may pick up on that. So I may remove it maybe at 40% or so. This is so it's so my dress remains a little sharp. Sometimes there's a little spill on there, which most of the case it's not, but it just remains here. Even in the eyes, sometimes I'll come back at 100%, hit tapping the zero, zero key, and then my brush, and just to make sure that there's no spill in that area. So if I hit the um, backspace on your keyboard, there's your mask, okay? So that's showing you where I just erased and where the rest of the filter has been applied. She doesn't look too good there, but remove that by hitting that backspace key. So there you go. So there's the softening. So for me, very easy to use, very easy to and quickly to use, whether you're in Lightroom or Photoshop. But and if you're a Photoshop user and you like layers, that's kind of the method I go to. Now, if this was not sitting this raw file in Lightroom, I could just directly drag or or, or have, obviously open, as I could say, either way, a photo in Photoshop, it'll launch Camera Raw where we're at, and then I can obviously access my filters right there, right? So I'm in net, net collection there. So that's the quick way to do that, and then obviously go accordingly. Now, as far as retouching, yes, I mean, I can still grab clones and stuff. I can retouch blemishes and so on in here. I can do that in Lightroom if I want to, but this is just giving you uh, what I would do normally if I'm processing it that way, okay? So easy stuff for the light, light images, um, whether you're adding softness, and whatever you click on that original filter, it's picking up on those tones. So anyway, so I hope you like that part. So let's go back and grab another image. Let's work on some kind of more of a coloring effects. So let's hit discard because I don't need to save this for now. And so let's go back into Lightroom because there will be a test. And uh, and I even got a couple portraits in here. So let's I'm going to show you, let's work on two different images real quickly, meaning um, color-wise, boosting color. And by the way, even on an image like this, same thing. Once I would have selected the skin tone easily, but if you notice the highlight, again, if you look on the right, look at the exposure, that's going to really help you both in your presets and processing that you're not having to recover stuff. I can always open shadows. I can add a reflector. I can add a fill light. But it really trying to keep the highlight, that's a major thing. So, so let's pick on another image. I've got a, maybe an engagement picture. I've got, obviously, I've also have a couple fashion pictures. So I think if you guys don't mind hanging out with me all day today, we'll kind of go through them all, which, of course, I'm just kidding. So, all right. So let's pick on this image here. Um, this is, again, straight out of the camera. I'm going to click up here in the top right. This will show you it's a raw file. Uh, it was shot at 200 a second, 5.6, 100. So there you go. So you'll know that that's exactly what we're doing. So before we add any other enhancements to this, again, we're going to prep the file. So in this case, color correction, if you want to do a quick color correction here, sometimes, like I said, if you look at the numbers, they're not perfect, pretty close, right? Sometimes they're pretty close. Sometimes they're like, what are, what are they thinking, right? You can still tweak that. So we did that, number one. Number two, if I want to open up some shadows here, because remember, I'm prepping this to take this in there. And the secret is I want to make sure there's some detail. Most cases, I can add that there. Um, same with the whites, but I feel there's enough detail here. So let's make sure we kind of bring that down. Take a look at the sky. As you know, you can see that's bringing that down. But again, blacks, remember, I may add a, a nice preset tones to this. So sometimes I'll go the opposite. I'll either open up contrast. You can see it kind of flattens that. Or same thing here. I'll go the opposite with the blacks. Because remember, I can add that later on. But I'm going to zoom in. I just want to watch the highlights, especially on the face. Sometimes I'll even come down just a little bit darker. I just pull down the exposure, even though it was perfect exposure, according to that. I'll pull it down a little bit. And then the same thing with the shadows. I'll open those up a little bit more. Because now if I add any presets, I've got a pretty good neutral image. And it's not going to really block 
whether it's the highlights or shadows, or I should say clip the shadows uh, and vice versa highlights. So you gotta be careful. So now here's one that if you went directly from here, I'm gonna show you directly from here into the Color Effects Pro 4 once again. So you have options here. And in this case, since I've already made adjustments, the default is gonna say edit a copy with your Lightroom adjustment, which is yes. So you hit edit. What it's gonna do in your Lightroom down below, it's gonna make a virtual copy. So you don't panic, it's not gonna affect your raw file. It'll make a virtual copy. So when I come back in here, you'll notice it'll be a TIFF file, which is basically still an, an un, unflattened image. You can still go back and correct that. So now it'll take me into a direct uh, uh, Color Effects Pro 4 directly. We're not going to Photoshop, it'll open the application direct. So what I noticed is, I think I mentioned earlier before, if you notice here where it says in the bottom right where it says save and cancel, you now you says you can't a brush in this one. Well, I noticed that with the raw files, but that's okay because any extra painting or uh, effects that I need to do, I, I'm going to go back to Lightroom and I can use adjustment brushes. Uh, so those options are available. I, I like how Photoshop or Lightroom never use the term layers in Lightroom, obviously, because they don't want us to leave and go to Photoshop, but you know they have all the adjustments so we can kind of tweak here. But now we want to just kind of add a little contrast, maybe a little beautiful contrast to the scene, but you notice I'm kind of flat. So let's play around with this for a second. So if I click on, let's click on, here's some of my favorite, let's click on dark contrast. Let's click on that. So you notice that's just a, a global, it's added this whole global effect and you have you always will have adjustments of the uh, opacity. So if that's too much as an overall, you can kind of go back and forth there. Same thing to see what your preferences is, right? That's an overall. But you, when you select one of these presets, you have to remember when you have the, the beauty of brushing and, and so on, I find myself that not too many images I do global filters, global presets. Everything that I'm doing is like a, I have a visual visualization of, am I gonna just use this dark contrast that I just chose for the wedding couple? Or am I going to use it for the sky? Or am I going to use it for the rocks? So you got to kind of think ahead of time because I don't need to use it for this whole thing. Remember back here, we have these points. So let's adjust this kind of, we can still tweak that. But let's say I just want this detail for the bride's dress. Okay, I just want to do two things for the bride's dress. Here's the before. You see, it's kind of bright. I've got detail, but maybe it's a little bit too bright and it's overpowering for me. But maybe I want, and then I want to add detail. So right now I may just target this for this dark contrast and I can adjust that. So let's go back here and hit a plus here. Okay, and so now everything that's sitting within that, as I click plus, we're just picking the dress only to make sure just the dress is in play for the most part, right? For the most part, um, just the white right in there. So you notice it's, it's eliminated that from the sky and everywhere else. So now I have an option of either doing the opacity of that just where you like. If I still want to tweak up on the top right, just notice here your top right, you can still tweak this section, whether it's your work in the colors, right? The details, try this is stuff that you can have already still tweak that adjustment. You don't have to worry about it here. So there you go. I can just target that. So I don't need to brush it anywhere. I can just go quickly there. Now let's say the sky, we want to do the same thing. I can kind of click around even in here on and add these presets accordingly. Now, if I want to, I can even add a secondary, right? So let's say now I want to do the sky. Another favorite is this tonal contrast. I want to add a little extra to the sky. The other one was adding darkness, but I just want to add contrast. Maybe I don't want to add darkness. I'll hit this tonal contrast. Once again, it's doing an overall thing. So if I don't want the overall, it actually looks good like that, right? I mean, that we could say, great, I'm done. It looks beautiful. But in this case, you have options of same thing. Uh, protecting highlights so that's not overblown. Probably one of my favorite filters as well. The midtones, you can see adjust the midtones. Now guys, these two filters, the three filters I showed you, if I bought anything else, I could I could leave now. This is it. This is this is probably the reason a lot of us said no, we 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 need this software. We can't leave it because of this reason. I, and I think those of us that are that are these Nick software junkies if I can say you know, we were always mad at Photoshop because we said, you guys better make sure they, that you let them continue, you know, allowing Nick to be used through Lightroom and, and Photoshop because we need this. These are some really cool tools that are like, wow, look at the image. Just here, I did a global one, but look at, I went from that one and just the whole thing is gorgeous. But if I just want to select 
a sky, same thing here. Notice here, when you click on contrast type, they have their presets with, built in here as well. So you need to go through here and see which one you prefer. So there's a lot of cool options within just, not just the sliders, not just what the, the recipe here, but also here. And so the sky, right now the whole thing has this tonal contrast. Let's come over here and just select the sky. And same thing, I wanna kind of remove this here. Now, if you're gonna, let's say you notice that the, the round might hit everything else. What's well, okay, sometimes I have to maybe make two of these adjustments. And it's easy way, if you just hit a control D or command D, that, well, let's first fix this one. Let's come here, apply the opacity on that, on this section, because remember, it's only gonna hit here. I don't wanna apply the whole image, but I'm gonna make sure the opacity here, then I can do a command or control D at another point and just kind of slowly go through here, see, and kind of overlap that again, control D, because I don't want to go full circle, right? Because if I go full circle, I'm back where I started. So sometimes I can drop a couple of these control points and then be real creative. So it's kind of crazy. I mean, it's just gorgeous how you can kind of go through here and then do your tweaks accordingly here, your opacity. Again, you have an option of coming back in here and adding and playing, see that? I can just still look, see which one I prefer. Got like a high pass look there. So that's kind of your adjustments overall. So you can keep building on here without having to go back into Photoshop. You, so those of you who don't even want to mess with that or don't even own it, not a problem at all. In fact, if, even if you don't own Lightroom, you can kind of go direct. So this is how cool this is within that. And, and can you guys believe this is the technology that was way before all that? I mean, not before Photoshop, before Lightroom. And it's just amazing. That's what makes the Nick collection uh, really cool because you're not only being able to add these presets. So, I mean, I can go on and on and keep adding filters, but one other thing is if I want to add like a white neutralizer to say the dress, I'm in a, in a ballroom and the dress is a little bit too, too yellowish, I can click this and you can see with one click, the algorithms already pick like the white points. And so if I go to compare mode, the dress has a little yellow in it. Okay. So if you're looking at it, it has a little warm tone in it. So there you go. It's kind of cleaned that out. I don't want it in the overall area. Same thing, I'll come back here, keep it within that same area that I did earlier. It's not affecting your other section because you know obviously it'll, it can keep building. Now, what I forgot to do earlier that it just I noticed it right now, just so you'll notice because I'm just showing you one filter at a time. But if I want to keep those filters, which I was layering a few minutes ago, you need to click add filter. So then each one of those that I keep adding, you notice here on the right-hand side, each filter that I keep working on will keep stacking up. So that's a step that by just talking to you fast, I forgot to do. But if you want to keep adding that, which now we've added that white neutralizer, let's go back here, keep it within this area, which I just did here. Make sure it's within there. And then of course, same thing here, you can work the opacity. Now I'm going to add, add filter, go back and add that dark contrast, which we did earlier. Okay. And then same thing, it looks a little bit more than I want, but I'm gonna come back here, click it on here. So now it's still just remaining in the lower the opacity. So that's how you build it, keep stacking it. Now, of course, we never called it layers because that's not what it is, but you notice here, that's where we kept stacking it here, whatever filter. So there you go, you don't forget that. Now, lastly in this one, you see here where it says save recipe. So you can technically, whatever you've done here, and you really like what you've done, you can click save recipe and let's call this Frank's Frank's, whoops, here we go. My mic's in the way. Frank's wedding. Pick. There we go. I always type two Ds. I don't know why, but it's fun. So then I'll click OK. Now, if you notice, I build one for today from scratch. So if you ever come back here in your filter library and you want to click any recipes that you save, there it is right there. So if, even if I came back, let's go back here. On the top right-hand corner, let's just say we want to eliminate these filters all together so we just eliminate them they're just back from scratch i can come back here and hit the recipes click that one time now the only thing is that remember it may or may not remember if you're doing some of these control points you see what it says here currently apply it's going to do a global chances are global so you have to go back and kind of start readjust so that's what i've noticed i start doing some specific points because remember i may be using this recipe on another image that's okay but it'll remember what a, a filters, presets I've used. And so it's kind of cool that way. So once you're done with this, once you've made all these adjustments, if you hit save, you'll notice now that it's gonna come back into Lightroom. Uh, it'll be noted as a TIFF file in, in a virtual copy. So you can now still have your original, see right here next to each other. This is the virtual copy that was straight out of the preset. 
and on the right obviously is the original one so you're not really losing uh, or uh, messing with the integrity of your raw file but you have a copy then you can still now adjust accordingly with your Lightroom adjustment so man there's a lot of great great options so love that love that so let's do black and white black and white if there's one thing today and another one thing that you want to take with you today is I know I get that from the audience all the time is to say Frank you know, how do I get like a great black and white no one's really explained to me how I get great black and whites and and the Nick collection has just an amazing what's called the uh, silver effects pro we're going to show you with just amazing I can spend an hour just on black and white but I'm going to make it simple so you don't have to worry about that so let's pick a good image for black and white something that has black and white in it because that's typically what you want to show and um, I have pulled a handful of these and they all look great so let's go to um, I might have time for two let's maybe do like fashion or other I, mean, I just wanted to pick a portrait in here so let's kind of let's pick on this one then I'll maybe show you another wedding one but but on this one because we'll do time to time whether it's uh, content photos branding uh, editorial stuff during the week we're always shooting portraits of any type again whether it's an engagement session or in this case uh, an editorial for a men's fashion thing but same thing applies when they want black and white so here's the keys to black and white remember we're going to start with the prepping mode first which is the key and then we'll go and add our black and white toning so when you think of it don't worry about turning this to black and white yet the number one steps are this is you've got to prep the file so that there's detail so here's the thing you notice every software most case you'll see a contrast slider how many of you admit that when you've ever added contrast it's either a good thing but most cases it's a bad thing well let me give you a little quick explanation contrast what the word contrast does i'll give you the explanation here contrast will accelerate the darks and will accelerate the whites so what that means is that if this is already white is already blown out and you add contrast to it you're just going to exaggerate that you notice that that's what that does okay so that's you're already starting out with a bad foot if you're trying to do black and white black and white only works great in the number one trick to black and white is you've got to have detail in the highlights and detail in the blacks once you prep the file with those two things you're ready to go so that's your secret there if there's no detail in either one of those you're no matter what filter presets kind of like our color because by the way color has its own color contrast there's color contrast so when your colors are like remember earlier if you're adjusting here on the right hand side you've added extra saturation to a color photo extra vibrance to a color photo or even extra color temperature in a photo and now you add contrast you will destroy the color portion of the image because you, same thing there's called color contrast and you've just killed it so you keep everything neutral before you start making that final enhancement so that's what i find in the technical behind the scenes to help you get the successful image so let's do this black and white frank just said hey let's add let's add detail in there and obviously some i'm going to exaggerate some of this because we can always pull out images now remember you guys notice anytime you do exposure adjustment for example let's go clear back to zero you do your exposure i'm just looking at his face okay so let's just start there for one second uh color temperature same thing you want to make sure color temperature is accordingly usually i don't like to oversaturate faces i like to be a little more neutral so it looks more natural looks more like film films more neutral and natural versus me really adding too much color but number two many times I will take this into the software and watch and before I go there I'm going to just go and add the the actual uh, details in both of these by if I want if I do too much highlight by it's going to bring down his face so I just very little but I can add shadows here open the shadows but I can also do that via contrast see that so even your contrast but if it's doing that overall that's why I will take this into the other software we use is super cool it's the Vivesa because that if you're not using Lightroom let's say you're not even Lightroom you're in Photoshop right you want to target certain areas the Vivesa software is kind of the same control point technology that we used earlier so this is set up just to do the tonal adjustments with that um u-point technology right so you can actually just add a control point by clicking here so remember that white 
but I don't want to affect his face. So let's watch that circle. So remember, I'm just working in that area. I'm um, even the here, kind of this area here. And I can also just remove some of it. It shouldn't affect the face because it's only picking the white tone. And then here's even right directly here, I can work on the on that image. See, but oh, it just hit the tie. There you go. Let's go back to the white and then just bring down the white. See, I can just bring down that. I can work directly there. Now, if I want to add another point, okay, you can either do control command D and then go back to the darks. And same thing here. I can open up the shadows directly to that. You've got contrast, which I'm going to leave that alone for last. So just hang in there with me. Keep that zero. So saturation I'll need to work with. Structure is another amazing thing that's also in our in our black and white and our silver effects. So I can just come in and just tweak this. Okay, if I didn't have, again, the option in Lightroom or Photoshop, I don't want to do masking because that's a little bit too complicated for some people. Okay, and just hit save, right? I can just work on just tones depending where I'm coming from, right? Very quick, very easy. You don't have to brush it. You don't need a Wacom tab because this technology already figured it out. The last step here is now let's do the black and white. So I'm going to right click and go into my Silver Effects Pro 2. It's going to keep the copy with the adjustments, right? We don't need to do a copy because we're not starting from scratch. And the edit, the original would be again, in this case, the original, but we want to keep whatever adjustments. Hit edit. It'll bring us back into the color effects, when well, this case, the Silver Effects Pro and give you your black and white. So you guys ready? It's like a candy store here, <laughs> okay? It's like, wait a minute, do I have enough time in the day to shop and look at all this cool stuff? So let's click here. So right now, as you come in here, it's giving you, when you click all, it's giving, giving you all their presets, okay? These are all the presets, and this is where you look at the image. And right now, you can notice it's giving you a global adjustment. Sometimes I'll close these out so you don't get confused. You just close this out. Obviously, it's starting with brightness, and contrast and structure. So right now, I don't want to do anything with this one yet. If I if I want to click on what the recipes or the thing adjustments that have been made, you can click on some and some will be to your liking and some won't. But the point is that if I want to make the adjustment, because I have detail in the whites and the darks, now when you add the contrast, you're going to still have details. Okay. You're still going to have details in there. Now, in this case, it even gives you a tonal protection. So if you want to make sure that it's not affecting, you notice how it opens that up, this will give you another option. So, and same with your highlights, it's not affecting that. But the trick is that if you've already kept detail in the whites and the darks prior to this, and let's go before and after here, even though I've added the contrast, see that's the before and I bumped up contrast, it's still detail in that. And that's what looks so great. It's not affecting the highlight or the shadow because there's already detail. And so right there alone, that's what creates a really beautiful black and white when I can have details in both, right? So let me pull up a wedding image real quick too. So that I can hit save if I want to save that. Remember, it saves it as a virtual copy. And if I need to make more tweaks than anywhere else, I can do that there. But you basically went from that. And let's reset this raw file. So see how there would be like almost hardly any detail. And then my black and white right there when you go to compare mode. There you go, see that? You can see that here, you know, of course I can add more, but in this case, even my black and white is still nice and contrasty, but I still have details. So that's kind of your secret into a black and white. So anytime you work on black and white, that's what you want to look at, right? So let me do one more example of, uh, of that. Um, let's see, let's pick on it again. I got tons of cool ones here. This, there was a bride here on the staircase. Here we go. I think it's on the right side. There we go. So just don't want one more here for you. Okay. So one more like that. So in this case, same thing here. If I go back to make my prep work here, if you would, I just want to make sure there's details in this area. So same thing, the exposure, as you can see, is zeroed out. Let's look at the aperture and all that for you guys. So here it's with a 200 second shutter. I'm at F4, 800 ISO. Um, I'll give you a tip about ISOs. People ask me, Frank, what's the best ISO to use? So I've got a good technical scientific answer for you. So the, the way we are when we, as, as I study photography formally, you know, what we've always said is that we use the lowest ISO um, based on the shutter, of course, uh, shutter speed that we either we're going to handhold or the apertures we have available to us. But you always want to use the slowest or the lowest uh, ISO you can to 
to introduce less noise in, or if it was grain with the film and that's what you do so if you can hand hold this here at 200 and f4 then at 800 it is but if i could have done this at 400 iso and maybe you wanted to shoot wide open at 2a then you probably could have been down to 400 200 so we always say the rule of thumb is to use the uh, the lowest iso to introduce less noise as possible that's usually the rule of thumb okay so getting back out of that let's go back into our software mode so same thing here i want to add any exposure i think the exposure in this highlights is good i may want to add a little extra here in a few minutes but if i want to if there's any highlights to remove same thing I, if i do a global here that's one way if i want to open up shadows same thing i usually will open up shadows because I want to see detail in the darks. I'll exaggerate this a little bit. Blacks, remember in, the, in, the, in my presets, I'll have plenty of blacks to work with, but I may want to add details. And uh, so that one, I think I'm just looking at her for right now. I'm just working in this particular image because many times the first thing you look at is the, the person's face, number one. And then as you start adjusting, you notice that, wait a minute, it blows everything else out because everything is done global. But in this case, I'll show you one of my favorite filters it's kind of a single without doing multiple processing it's a single click here but i'll make sure i have a, a, all the details here uh, obviously i've got a little brightness here which i can do with the control point so let's basically take this i'm going to take this over and, and to photoshop as a smart object and the reason i do smart object the same thing is if i want to go back and tweak one extra step i can still do that i can i have an option of using my layers i have options of using the camera raw i mean there's so many options for me in, in an advanced level that's why i'm as a habit is just always stick with that right so let's go back in here turn off this pixel grid we don't need that and that's now we have a choice of what we want to do so in this case same thing i'm going to make a a copy that's my my copy so if i do want to add adjust anything here i can Many times I'll make a, I'll do another copy. A, I'll do a control J because that one I'm going to work separate, but because I want to be able to brush this, you notice I've made this a smart object, which means it's considered basically a raw file. In this file, I'm going to rasterize it because what will happen is when I come back in, I want to be able to have the option of brushing in whatever I need. If I leave this as a, a camera raw file, that feature of brushing it in through the NIC is, is, is not able to do that, but of course I can add a mask. So it's a, ways of working around all this so so this one same thing let's go in and add color effects pro 4 is one of my favorite things to do is adding you know most of us like to do like a vignetting you know many, many of us would take either like a circle or you know most vignetting is like a round thing but when people say well how do you get like an overall darkening of it well here you go here's one of my secrets of some of the images now you may prefer your images bright like this, so that's your preference. You may want to come here with your control points, uh, like Vavesa, the Vavesa, and select the window, darken just the window. So you can kind of go back and forth and, and fine tune this, but just to make it quick for us, I will use what's called midnight for my vignetting. Now, again, if I have more time, of course, I'm going to probably start you know, darkening the windows and so on separately, but either by Vavesa, I can just select it, but in this case, I'm going to use this and I'm going to use this one. It says neutral, which is fine, means it's not introducing any colors. Uh, it does add a little blur. So if you notice the softness, if that's your preference, if you don't want blur, you can take that down. But this is what I'll do sometimes. I may take this down. This obviously works probably better on a night shot, but I'm just doing it here just for sake of the vignetting portion for you. So I will take this. So I have an option of either brushing it in, which I like to brush if I'm using a tablet or the control points. I'll hit brush. And in basic, it'll see, and this is the way I'll do my vignetting, it'll darken the whole image. But instead of just putting a circle, like maybe Lightroom will just make like a circle around it, no matter what feathering you do, it's just not to my liking, is then I will basically use a brush. You notice here, I'll hit fill, and then I'll hit erase. And so, and many times, is I will come with a brush, and I may even start out depending at 50%, and then I'll just fine tune whatever I want, see, the brush, and leave an overall darkness of that, right? So then I can kind of highlight that accordingly, see? So that's the cool part is I'm able to brush out and you still got this overall darkness on this. Now, especially at night times, uh, let me show you a nighttime one. I'll show you because I usually do these more in a nighttime shot without doing all these adjustments. So I'm going to cancel this one. One more that I just did. In fact, I just did one I just posted. So that's why I remembered it. So let's go pick this one right here. 
Uh, I'm going to pick on this guy right here. I'm going to do a color correction here. I'm going to select maybe the wall. Now, by the way, one last photo tip. Most of the time when you're, as you know, outdoors, the outdoor color temperature usually defaults most outdoors in bright sunny days. If you look over in the color temperature on the right, usually defaults at about 5,500. That's usually by default. But even without even looking, and this is outdoors using like these overhead canisters, if I type in 3,300 or 3,200, either one, it's closer to, because that's more of what those incandescents are. So really you can tweak it according from that. So remember the exposure on her face, you can see I don't need to add much here. Maybe add a little highlights here if I wanna do that. And then same thing, let's open this back up and do the same thing we just did. Color Effects Pro 4, it's gonna open up. Now this one, I'm going directly to that. I'm going directly through there, so I'm gonna use a control points. So remember, if you're not having, if you don't wanna deal with the Photoshop stuff, I can use the control points. So there, I'm gonna add, as you saw, I remembered the last filter I used. And so here we go, I'm gonna minus. And wherever I'm at here, wherever it's within, whether I'm on the face, right? Wherever you're at, it's gonna remove that. So that's kind of the way you would remove it in the control points, right? Because if I go all the way out, obviously that's what it's doing there, right? So if you wanna be more specific, like I did earlier, then I'm gonna come over and open that as a smart object told you lots of ways to get in and out lots of ways to get in and out so it's your preference what you prefer some people that i've talked to don't even use photoshop they're not familiar with smart objects so it drives them crazy so let's go last but not least hold on let's bring this image in because i got dual screen so that's why it's acting crazy and i'm going to make my copy remember i'm rasterizing this layer on this particular one because when i i'm able to brush that once i use this filter go back in here nick Color Effects Pro, it's gonna bring in midnight. Sometimes I'll actually mask this out. If, I'm, if it's a very specific image, I may mask it in Photoshop. It just depends on how critical it is. So there's your overall. So in this case, see where it says brush now? Then I'll choose to use that brush. For some reason, because I'm using a tablet and it's sensitive you know, pressure, I just like to paint with that. Then I'm able to use that technology and so I love that. That's why it's one of my favorite things to do is use the tablet because it's pressure sensitive as well, you know, as the brush. So let's click OK here, hit fill, and then use your erase. So now without the U point, you see it's going to kind of be a little bit more depending what my brush is. And you can get in super close if you want to. Usually again with using a, a tool, a, a pen tool, you know, I can just paint in real lightly if I want to. Sometimes I outline them and you notice I may just starting with the face and I'm doing this kind of quick here. So forgive me if I'm going out the lines, but I may not need to do the whole thing. See, I'm just looks, looks like a spotlight. So those filters. And again, if, if I needed to add more, I can go back in and add more fill. If I want to, again, do a little bit of uh, in this section here, I'm at maybe at 50 percent. I want to open up. See that you have the uh, painting capabilities. So that's what's cool about this is that you can customize quickly. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. So I don't know. I love it. It, it, it gives me lots of opportunities. I always invite everybody to, um, again, if you haven't used it yet, download the trial, um, play with it, play with all the adjustments. I mean, you'll notice that whether you're a, a Lightroom user, Photoshop user, or a standalone, these options are endless. You don't have to be a wizard to, to use this, but I always say is, again, just make your image neutral to start. And by the way, you can use just JPEGs, so don't worry, you don't have to raw process every time, but if you want to, you can. So lots of choices, so maybe if there's any questions I can answer, Lori can uh, ask, chime away. <laughs> it's been fantastic, I love working, watching you work, it's just great, so much fun. <laughs> uh, I hope you folks enjoyed it as well. Um, there are a couple questions, Frank. Okay. Uh, the first one is, um, there was a question about HDR. Do you ever shoot in HDR? Or is it always... Well, just ah, good, good question. Well, well, the thing that the thing about HDR, I think, and, and those of us who started in the beginning day, that's almost like language, like, wow, where do we hear that from? Uh, before us, because back then we were relying, if I go back to, let's close this for a second, go to Lightroom. You know, back then, let's say we picked on an image here, you know, obviously we would shoot multiple images and let that, that particular HDR software, a third party software, or even Photoshop introduced in HDR would let us layer in, right? It would it would mask in all those images, but it really, they got to the point where the software, when it was merging three or four or whatever X number of shots together, 
none of us are really happy. It was just over exaggerating everything. So now if I am going to do uh, what quote unquote an HDR thing is, let's say this, these are right out of the camera. So clearly, you know, in photography, you know, we're using the lighting, right? Like you saw earlier. And, and one of that, we're using the lighting to get the, the image perfected in the camera. So we're not necessarily, in fact, let me zero this. So I'm going to reset this out there. I just reset that. Let me go back. See, that's the, after the adjustment, but just resetting it. So HDR, if you get it, most of it correct in the camera, you know, I would either shoot us only maybe two images and just come back and, and, and I can do it here in Photoshop or Lightroom or anything. And I can just hand paint in areas that I want. I don't need the, the HDR to try to figure that out for me just because it, and for me, it never came out as good. It was either too contrasty. It didn't blend well. So I'd rather literally, I can even take, do as much work here, or I can do even if I want to cheat and create a virtual copy and, and make adjustments and merge those, I could do those things. But what I find myself doing is let's say this shot here, let's say it was already hypothetically too, too dark. Whoops. Let me go back here. Let me reset that. Let's say this would have been way too dark in the initial photo. I would have taken a second photo with it bright and then just blend and just paint in the bright areas. So I think most of us, and even if you're a real estate photographer or landscape photographer, that's what we're doing now. We'd rather just take two or three bracketed and just come back and then paint in, just auto align, auto align it here or in Photoshop and just paint in accordingly. Great. A couple people are asking if you use gray cards to uh, in your shoots. That's a great question because as you know, if you're shooting a wedding, it's kind of hard to do that. So if I'm shooting stuff like this, that's maybe more critical. This was for a, a jet company, and I know it's just a, a portrait session I'm shooting, and I know that I, I can get it right, then I can. I mean, I can shoot it. It only takes two seconds to shoot a gray card because then when I do use this white balancing tool, I can come and do that, right? I can kind of select that. But in most cases, you know, you can, if you understand the balancing of this, like I kind of tried to explain earlier when you're looking for neutral points, it was really I think it was really confusing the way they named this. I think that's what happened, right? When we when the word came in white balance, that kind of messed up everybody's vision of that, right? When they said that's white balance. Well, you know, you're really neutral balancing because you want the image neutral. When it leans towards like clicking over here at a different color, that's why it started introducing too many tones. But if you have that option of gray carding it, absolutely. That's just like using a light meter. It takes two seconds and then you're done. Okay, great. Um, and then let's see, I'm going to take one more question. And it was about using blending modes. Do you ever use blend or luminosity masks in Photoshop when applying the NIC filters? You can, you can. If you feel that, if, I mean, I, I, I'll be honest, I don't think I've ever had to in most cases because I'm able to get, and this is a, your choice, you get the result that you that you want, meaning um, from already what Nick has provided with those control points. If you if you learn the control points in there, you know you've already added the effect you wanted. So luminosity stuff that I would do would be because I'm in Photoshop only, and so obviously that's a tool I'm going to use there. So in most cases I, I don't need a blending mask unless I I do bring it in as a layer and I say, oh you know what, let's try a darkening or lightening or or a multiply or whatever the blending option. Sure, I, I'm like I I play with all those because sometimes I might get a better effect on it that maybe I hadn't thought about. So yes, I use them, but with this Nick, I don't have to because with those control points, I'm able to get it to what the I think I'm looking for. Perfect. Okay, I think we'll wrap this up. Frank, fantastic presentation. Thank you. Uh, we really enjoyed watching you and everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Please visit. Frank Salas's website at franksalas.com to learn more about him and to see more of his beautiful images. And then be sure to check out our website as well, Nick Collection um, by DXO.com. And we're also up on YouTube, which is also Nick Collection by DXO. So uh, please join us uh, for our next uh, webinars. And Frank, have a wonderful rest of your day. And thanks again for a fantastic presentation. You're welcome. Thank you, Mike. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye, everyone.